In this lecture, we will learn about navigation properties and how we can use them to fetch related data from the database. In Entity Framework Core, navigation properties are properties that allow us to navigate from one domain model to another or from one entity to another in a relational database. Navigation properties are defined as properties in a c -sharp class that represent a relationship between two entities. Navigation properties are typically defined in the form of an object or collection of objects that reference another entity or entities. For example, if you have two entities in your database such as walk and region, you might define a navigation property in the walk class to represent the region this walk is present in. That's what we, are, what we have done in our application as well. We have a walk class and at the bottom of the class, if you see, we have defined the navigation properties that define the relationship between a walk and a difficulty and also a walk and a region. So when we use Entity Framework Core, we can get the information about the difficulty and the region this walk is in. Let's go on and use these navigation properties inside our repository to fetch the information for difficulty and the region. So I will open my repository, which is the SQL walk repository. And at the moment in the get all method, we are getting all the walks back, but we are not able to get the difficulty or the region information back. Now Entity Framework Core provides us with a very easy solution and that is using a single method called include. Before we send this list back, we have to use another method which is called an include. And if you open brackets, it says as a string provide me with the navigation property path. And this is what we have to give to it. So we can say the navigation property for this walk was basically difficulty and region. So I will say include difficulty as a string. And I can also say include the region, which is, uh, I just want to copy the name so that I, I don't uh, misspell it. So include the region as well. Now using these two methods, when the DB context goes to the database to collect all the walks. It will also collect the information for the difficulty using the difficulty ID that this has over here. And also it will collect the region information through the region ID that it has. So using these two methods or just one method, which is the include method, we are able to get the related data for this table back. There is another way to write this if you want to make it type safe and that is to use um, action. So x such that x dot and I will refer the difficulty property and this is the same as we have over here but is type safe. But I want to later on make generic repositories. So I will keep this as a string for now. And because it solves the same purpose, I will keep this as it is. So it's now time to test our solution and see if we are getting the difficulty information and the region information back inside the response. So we will get the response back in the domain. If we open the controller, we open the Vox controller. So we will get the response over here in the domain model, but the walk DTO doesn't have enough information to present the region and the difficulty back. So I will also include the region information. So I will say this is the region DTO and call this region. And I will also uh, create a walk DTO, sorry, the difficulty DTO, so that I can also pass the difficulty information back. So right click on the DTO folder, add a new class, and I will call this the difficulty DTO.cs, and it will have just two properties. So I can copy the properties from the difficulty domain model. So copy these two and paste it back into the difficulty DTO. So once we have that, we also have to define the mappings. So in auto mapper, we already have the mapping between region and region DTO, also walk and walk DTO. We want to create one more, which is for the difficulty. 
and the difficulty DTO. So save that change and close that. We can now come back to the controller and inside the walk DTO, we will add the remaining property. So we have added the region DTO, but we also want to show the difficulty information. So property of difficulty DTO. This is difficulty. And now if you want, because we have the information of the IDs already inside these two, we can now go on and remove the ID properties. And this will be all the work information and then the region information and the difficulty information. So we have everything that we have in the database now reflecting back to the client as well. So let's try this out. Swagger is up and running and we will scroll down to the Vox endpoint and we will try the get all Vox again. So try it out, hit the execute button. And if I scroll down, we have the same success response back with an array of the Vox. We only have one Vox, but you can see we have the ID name description length Vox image for this walk and this is all the walk information we need but apart from that we now also have the region information which is the id code name and the image of the region as well and with that we also have the difficulty information with the id and the name so we are sending all the information we need back to the client now using these navigation properties so you can see how easy it is to use navigation properties and entity framework core to get all the related information back from the client from the database and send it to the client. Now this is totally optional is if you want information to be passed through to the client, then you use navigation properties. If you don't want to send it, you can modify your uh, DTO to just not send this. So this is totally customizable. And you know, if the client needs this information, then you should totally send it back. So we are done with the get all method of walks. Now in the next lecture, we will work on getting a single walk back along with their related information.